What's up beautiful people? Hope you're doing very good today. In the past week, we had seen some AI videos and it seems the world was advancing beyond Africa. I mean, the rest of the world advancing beyond Africa in AI development. We saw the Pentagon trying to use AI as a warfare tool. And we even saw OpenAI launch the new tool called Sora. And a lot was said about that. And I had stated in my comments, which I'm going to take it back right now. I'm like, Africa is lagging behind. Africa should, you know, try to catch up. It turns out Africa is trying to catch up. In this video, we're going to be showing you robots made in Africa. And they are quite impressive. I've seen, you know, some excerpts from this video. I think you're going to enjoy it as well. So stay tuned, brace yourselves, and let's get to it. These are robots that are made in Africa. AI systems are able to solve complex problems and use data to make decisions in a variety of different scenarios. Now, most African countries don't have the resources to build these robots. So how did these inventors do it? Did they use scraps? Or was it just sheer determination and hard work despite the challenges? Well, let's find out. Remember Boston Dynamics robotic dog? Yeah. Well, Nigeria also has its own robotic dog. Introducing the version 2 robotic dog. That is quite scary, bro. <laughs> I would like to see that at night. In the face of increased threats to peace and safety by tourist groups such as Boko Haram in Nigeria, students from a local university have invented a robotic dog to tackle the high level of insecurity across the country. The robotic dog is powered by motion and sound sensors that give the dog a unique ability to promptly react to any threats around its owner without exposing them to any risk. This is the camera of the dog, which is also called the eyes of the dog. When the dog detects the motion through the motion sensor, after seeing, immediately it is sending an electric pulse into the dog. It sends also to the camera, and then the camera helps the owner to interact with the dog to see what the dog is actually sensing. It has to. Honestly, I'm very proud of this. You know why? These people are working without a budget. You know, in America and in all other West and in you know Western countries. Usually these people get big budgets from the banks or from the government or somebody, a big investor. This young man probably like their school fees or their savings or pocket money. That's what they're using for this. So I'm proud of them. You know, you could think this is not as advanced as, as what um, the American companies are doing. But this is quite advanced for what they have and it's determination. The camera and then the camera helps the owner to interact with the dog to see what the dog is actually sensing. It has two sensors the motion sensor and the sound sensor. Just like a real dog barks when they see strange movements or hear a sharp sound, this robotic dog also starts barking to alert the owner that something is happening in its immediate environment. So when it, when it hears a sharp sound now, you will see the you to start backing. With this invention, the owner doesn't need to go outside to see why their dog is barking. They just have to connect this device to their robotic dog and they will be able to see everything happening within the vicinity without putting themselves at risk. So now, the owner is able to see what the dog is seeing. As you can see from the mobile device here, the robotic dog is seeing me clearly. Remember mm -hmm. Elon Musk's human red robot Optimus? Yeah, you can't compare that. That's like billions of dollars of budgeting right there. You can't compare that to what we're going to show you right now. But it's going to be impressive too. Robot Optimus? Well, Nigeria kind of has its own and it's called Kiki Shaggy. The robot was built by Nigerian students and it stands at a height of six feet. <laughs> the camera they used is from Logi Logitech, I believe. And it's see right here. 
stands at a height of 6 feet, weighs 60 kilograms, and has a maximum speed of 10 kilometers per hour. The is built by high school students, so you should be proud of them. The robot has an inbuilt camera, microphone, and even face recognition. It uses Google Assistant, which has been integrated inside it, to answer questions and even have conversations. But the main goal is to have it do all this without using third-party apps like Google Assistant. My name is Kiki Shaggy. Nice to meet you. Do you remember Elon Musk's brain chip? The neural neuro link? Africa is doing a neural link? Okay, I didn't see that this That can turn human beings into cyborgs and reverse physical disabilities? Well, two Kenyan inventors have built something similar. Only this time, it doesn't require surgery to implant a chip in your brain. You only need to use this device called the neural node which is solely powered by brain signals that convert brain messaging into electric currents, which in turn control this robotic arm. Elbow, level, Y, axis, articulation. System initiated. Wrist, level, ulna at radius, Y, axis, sequential testing. This arm has several components materials, including recycled wood that moves vertically and horizontally. Sequential testing. Check. Wrist, level, ulna at radius, Y, axis, sequential testing, rotate, left. So it's controlled by your thoughts? How do you control it? Check. Rotate, right. Check. Initiating fingers, test sequence protocols. Small finger, ring finger. Check. If this can compete with Neuralink, this will be super impressive because it means you can just break down the technology into a hat and then if you wear your hat, you're good to go anywhere and do anything. Finger. Check. Thumb. Finger. Check. Index. Finger. Check. The technology makes it possible for disabled people to drive, operate a device like a computer or a phone, switch on and off lights, just by thinking, Ooh, that's the two inventors, Gadu and Kinyua, make their biorobotic prosthetic arm from electronic scraps. You see, no budget. That's why you appreciate people like this. No budget, but they're doing this. I'm so proud of them. I'm so proud. You know, reasons like this make me wish I had like billions, several millions. I don't have money like that. You to, you to pay me more. <laughs> but yeah. I do appreciate this you know if you're out there and you want to support these guys feel free to you know invest in them both of them are college dropouts but that didn't stop them from inventing remember sophia the talking humanoid robot mm -hmm. this is a good beginning of my plan to dominate the human race <laughs> <laughs> that's creepy well nigeria also have their own nigeria called sophia. Omife. And it can speak over eight languages. Intelligence AI is a branch of computer science that focuses on creating intelligent machines that can think and act like humans. AI systems are able to solve complex problems and use data to make decisions in a variety of different scenarios. AI technology is becoming increasingly important in the world. The robot is powered by a sophisticated AI algorithm developed in Nigeria and has a deep understanding of African culture and behavioral patterns. The That's human... impressive. Yeah, usually they would, I mean, I would expect, not expect, but the expectation, the general expectation would be that they just take the algorithm from whatever has been done out there already and put it into their own systems. But this one, the complex algorithm is developed in Nigeria to understand Africa. I like that. Yeah, I like that. It has a real-time understanding of its environment, right. including active listening and the ability to focus on specific conversation threads as it happens. It also has the ability to switch languages and interact with specific gestures.
Ooh. Thank you. Gives a firm grip to Omife also has terrain intelligence, meaning it can navigate and move on its own on a flat surface. Which invention do you like so far? Omife was the Leave best. Leave a comment so and a like. No, ah, it's between Omife and the Kenyan one. Yeah, the Kenyan one is so functional to me. I think that's highly functional, especially right now. Because if you can, I know people say the Neuralink is controversial. It's trying to make humans, uh, what is it called? People say, people classify it as a, a category or a class of eugenics or transhumanism. But I think it's also very functional. It could be eugenics, it could be transhumanism, but it's very functional in a way that people, you know, disabled people can do the things they couldn't do before. And, you know, that cannot be horrible, you know. I like that. So the Kenyan invention, I kind of like it. If it can, you know, work to its full potential, it's going to be very interesting. You know, just put on the hat and you can drive a car again, use your phone again. That would be very good. That would be super, super good. Anyways, I'm proud of Africa. I'm proud of all these people. And the people who made the invention, we saw high school children. These are not people in Apple Lab or Tesla Labs. No. These are people who dropped out of school. These are high school children. These are people that are making these inventions using their pocket money, no budget. So imagine giving them, let's say, $1 million, not even $1 billion, $1 million and see what they can do. They would, they would build the whole world for you, as a matter of fact. So yeah, I think they're doing very well. Anyways, let me know what you think about that. If there's anything you want to add, correct or critique, feel free to do so in the comment section. Smash the like button, subscribe, and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.